Um, it's really my pleasure to be here. Thank you for inviting me. Um, so today I'm going to share some, some of my ideas on how generate AI can affect the future of higher education. Uh, disclaimer, so everything that I'm going to say is really, uh, is really my, my idea, nothing to do with uh, the organizations I work for. So if there's an issue, come to me. So my background is not already mentioned, but I, I want to highlight that I, I, uh, I, I work with some of the very interesting professors uh, when I was uh, in my early career. So at UIUC, I worked with David Walls and Donald Mickey. And I highlight Donald Mickey because there's a story I want to share uh, uh, later on. I also got to uh, work with Professor Patrick Winston, who was the, the head of MIT AI lab in, in Boston. And that's where I, I started to uh, work in AI. Uh, for uh, Professor Donald Mickey, uh, in, the interesting story is, uh, is uh, related to this uh, invitation game. Uh, I think some of you have seen this movie, have you? So this movie is about Alan Turing, of course. Alan Turing is the father of modern computing, uh, also father of AI, and he's played by Cumberbatch here. And interestingly, one of the persons in the movie uh, that helped him build the machine was was my uh, advisor. <laughs> so it's an interesting link to uh, to the father of uh, AI. Okay, so. Um, AI actually is, is is as long and maybe not as long as some other discipline, maybe 60, 70 years old. Um, um, and when we say AI, uh, it means different things to different people. But in general, when we say AI, it's really about having a computer uh, machine or program do things that's interesting, do things that you normally think only humans can do, you know, like reasoning, learning things, making decisions and problem solving. And we get to see AI everywhere these days. Uh, and then, you know, like, for example, Face ID in your iPhone, be able to talk to your mobile phone use with speech. If you have, uh, if you ever play with AR, VR headsets, it could recognize objects. Recommendation engines for e-commerce, whenever you go to an e-commerce site or when you go into Facebook, um, uh, social media, they automatically uh, understand what your interests are and, and be able to recommend products and personalized content for you. Of course, translation, uh, that's a very common form of AI that you see all, all the time. Chatbots, these are the traditional chatbots that you see in banks. And it's interesting, most of these traditional chatbots are being extended uh, to, uh, to add um, uh, generative AI capability. So it's going to be more natural. Uh, in the future. And then, of course, smart cars, self-driving cars, robots. And then finally, we have general purpose AI, uh, like ChatGPT. So how is ChatGPT and other generated AI different from uh, uh, the other AI? So um, AI is not just one technique. There's many different uh, algorithms and techniques. You know, there's machine learning, natural language processing, AI planning rule-based expert system, speech recognition, et cetera, et cetera. So generative AI is one type of AI um, algorithm, you could say. How is it different? So generative AI is uh, a type of AI where we try to mimic the human brain. So in the human brain, we have, you know, very in a very high mm -hmm. level, we have neurons that are connected to other neurons. Uh, through synapses. So in the human brain, we have like a, a hundred uh, a billion uh, neurons and 1,000 trillion uh, of these synapses. So it's really complicated. And the way uh, generative AI works is that we try to uh, mimic uh, the structure uh, in, in software and hardware. Uh, and it's usually in layers, uh, it's, uh, we call it artificial neural network. And it, 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 it's quite amazing because, you know, the artificial neural network has been around for a long, long time, you know, decades. But recently, because compute power is, is, is more, more powerful, we're able to uh, simulate a lot more of these artificial uh, neurons and connections. Uh, in 2016, uh, AlphaGo won uh, one, one the the gold master Lisa do, do in uh, Seoul, 
And for this uh, AlphaGo um, model, it uses 40 million uh, parameters. So what that translates to is roughly 40 million connections between neurons. And the way it learns how to play Go, uh, at, uh, at least the original version, is it learns from watching all the games that human ever played online, every single game. And then they learn, and, uh, and, uh, and, and when they learn, when these, uh, gender, uh, these AI uh, neural networks learn, they convert the learning into floating point numbers. So basically it's 40 million floating point numbers that is giving it this capability. Face recognition, it uh, recognizes face by you know, uh, uh, recording your face and, 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 and uh, integrating it into other faces it, it knows. It uses over a hundred million parameters. Midjourney, released in last year, uses 890 million parameters to be able to, so Midjourney, for those who don't know, is that uh, is a software that automatically creates new images. So this is not really the Pope wearing Balenciaga. <laughs> it's, it's a, uh, it's a um, deep fake image of the Pope. And the way uh, General AI uh, does that is by looking at you know hundreds or millions of different images of the Pope and Balenciaga fashion, et cetera, et cetera. And once you put in the prompt, it's able to uh, create a new image for you based on this learning. ChatGPT3, uh, released two years ago, has 175 billion parameters. And then ChatGPT4 has 1.76 trillion parameters. It has a lot more parameters uh, because it's actually several models working together. So we tried to figure out which is the best answer of those models. And again, similar to uh, Midjourney, uh, where it learns from different images, ChatGPT learns from uh, different uh, text sources. For example, it learns from a lot of web pages. This is called the Common Crawl. It learns from a lot of dialogue, people talking to each other from YouTube. It learns how to program by reading source code from GitHub. It learns about books by looking at you know, the contents of the books themselves. It also learned from reading the uh, Wikipedia, and then the other are basically mathematical problems. So by reading uh, all these um, content, uh, both textual uh, coding and mathematical problems, is able to solve uh, uh, what you need uh, when you prompt it. And there's many different uh, gender of AI. There's you know, ChatGPT4 uh, from OpenAI. And if you're using Microsoft Bing, there's a Bing Chat, which is which is uh, free. It also uses ChatGPT4. Um, Google has Bart, um, is another general AI, and then Entropic has Claw too, uh, which is supposedly a, a more uh, a safe uh, chat uh, chatbot. And you probably uh, heard uh, the performance of these uh, general AI like ChatGPT4. It surpasses human in many of the tests. So in uh, this chart, uh, it passes a lot of uh, standardized tests like GRE, AP. So it's able to um, get into law school and not only get into law school, but also pass a bar exam. So that's pretty amazing. It's also able to uh, understand interpret images. So here you can ask what's, what's strange about this image. And it will say, okay, it's strange because a man is ironing clothing uh, on an iron board attached to the roof of a moving taxi. Um, it can also generate uh, different images. Um, it can generate audio, it can generate video. Here are three examples from Midjourney, Stable Diffusion 2, DALI 2. And this is a, a potential application for architects and interior designers. Um, in fact, uh, there are actually you know, hundreds uh, of uh, these different apps uh, that is based on gender AI. So there's apps that helps you uh, uh, generate images. There's apps that helps you with programming, uh, create 3D models, et cetera, et cetera. And I, I think sooner or later, I think all apps will have some sort of gender AI integrated into it. <clears throat> But 
researchers has also identified <clears throat> some potential problems. Emily and uh, her uh, <clears throat> co uh, co authors a couple of years ago wrote this uh, uh, article on the danger of stochastic parrots. So what they argue is that these generative AI systems basically is just a like a parrot repeating what is seen, repeating what is seen in in the web, repeating what is seen in Wikipedia, repeating uh, what uh, uh, you know contents of books and stories, and then stochastic it adds some random stuff to it as well. So they argue that this approach to AI is not really intelligent uh, like humans. But if you ask other AI researchers, they might say, you know, they might have a different opinion. They might say, oh, uh, actually, generative AI does have some sort of internal coding uh, that might represent uh, intelligent as well. So there's different uh, sides of the argument. But if you're interested, you can read this paper. It's uh, it's online. Okay, so that's a quick background of where uh, you know, generative AI is. Uh, how about opportunities in higher ed? I think this is what you know you are most interested in. And by the way, uh, uh, Jason, do, do you usually get questions as we go or at the end? Because I, I, either way, it's fine with me. Yeah, I, I think you can continue first and then we ask questions yeah, at the end. Yeah, if you have any questions, just you know, put it in the chat, that's fine. Yeah, yeah, you just put that in the chat, but and I, I will remind you if I see any questions. Okay, very good. So, um, just last week, uh, Microsoft announced that they are collaborating with uh, eight of the UGC uh, funded universities to provide them with uh, Azure OpenAI services. And according to them, there's four different ways that uh, ChatGPT can most benefit uh, higher ed. So first is to benefit teachers. So teachers can use it, use it for course development and evaluation. So GPT models can assist in course design by generating course content, supporting assessment design, and contributing to course improvement. And then for students, it can help student engagement and consultation. So general AI can be like a you know, 20 by, uh, 24 by 7 uh, tutor that's available anytime to answer questions that students may have, uh, help them with learning. On the research side, uh, general AI can, uh, and I don't know if you have tried it, but you give general AI a paper, it <laughs> summarizes it within a second. So it can help you with research because very often when we do research, you know, you take, you read 20 papers, there's only one that's relevant maybe. So this kind of helps you narrow down the paper that you're most interested in so you could do a deep dive into it. Uh, and then, uh, of course, at the admin, uh, uh, part there's you know chatbot for university wide operations so you can have a a chat GPT to uh, a answer questions that people might have about campus activities uh, uh, or whatnot uh, as well as maybe support you know the administrative functions like HR finance procurement uh, uh, etc. So so it basically is very comprehensive. It supports teaching learning, research, and admin. And what I like to do is really to drill down on these four aspects that Gen AI can help higher ed. So teaching, obviously, you know, teach, uh, teachers need to base syllabus. And, and, and it's a great uh, way to do that because uh, ChatGPT have seen syllabuses around the world. If not, uh, you could then you connect, uh, if you're using uh, ChatGPT with web function, it could go and find uh, syllabuses you know, from different universities, help consolidate uh, the latest uh, trends. It could help you maybe suggest exam questions, um, uh, essay questions, provide feedback. And they could also help you design presentations for your courses. So I don't know if you have tried that. You can say, ask uh, you know, ChatGPT to design like uh like days you know you might say okay i have uh, uh giving a talk i need 50 slides what should i put in each slide it would tell you <laughs> uh you know you know free slide or introduction another slide a set of slide or what whatever and then uh in addition you can ask ChatGPT to actually fill in the slide for you so if you have a slide on the background of general ai you know, what should go in there and then now with image generation, you can ask ChatGPT to generate images. Um, 
And then some some uh, some some colleagues are experimenting with uh, using uh, personalized audio and video. Uh, these are deep fake audio and video that sounds just like you and looks just like you. So these uh, virtual avatar. And so you could have a, a presentation with you, your face. Some uh, a virtual avatar looks exactly like you and talk exactly like you. All you need to do is type in all the texts in each line, and they would just read it off uh, as you would. So that's another uh, way to uh, create uh, for teaching. For learning, of course, there's personalized learning paths. Uh, it helps students to um, um, solve problems by giving it hints. And that, and you don't necessarily need to ask ChatGPT for answer. You can ask it for hints to solve it. So it helps our students to uh, enhance their learning. For research, uh, there's data analysis. Uh, if you're using data in your research, literature review helps you find papers, uh, helps you uh, generate hypotheses, uh, helps you uh, polish your, your paper. Um, and then um, you can also do peer review. So you could uh, ask uh, ChatGPT to make a right review for a particular paper and compare with your, your, your review mate. For admin, uh, there's so much uh, enrollment management, student retention. You know, how do you retain your uh, retain your your students? Uh, how do you allocate financial aid? Uh, creating marketing campaigns for the university. Uh, what kind of slogan to use? Uh, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So we look deeper into each one, like teaching. So teaching, I think the best way is to use general AI for ex, uh, experiential learning. And what that means is that it's integrated as part of the course. So it's sort of like flip, uh, flip classrooms. So you use uh, general AI within a classroom setting where students work, uh, work with general AI to uh, do problem solving, for example, come up with new ideas. And then they iteratively refine uh, those ideas. They would question the ideas. Uh, they would add their own insights, uh, make it even better. So, uh, uh, so that that kind of um, helping students uh, really learn how to use general AI uh, as part of the classroom learning uh, would be useful because uh, students, when it's then, is not just asking AI for a question and getting the answer. It's more of an iterative process. And what does the iterative process uh, involve? Oh, you have to, uh, you know, there'll be you know, things like critical inquiry. You can ask your AI questions. You can refine the answer and so forth. So, uh, so having that as an integral part of teaching, that is, uh, that's important. And teaching, of course, is generating syllabus that we mentioned. Um, potentially, you could generate personalized questions based on level understanding. So you have different students with different uh, learning levels. You can create different types of, uh, Questions that is uh, that is more suitable for uh, the level that they are. Uh, you can even uh, ask uh, ChatGPT to create engaging and interactive learning activities, such as game simulations, to help students understand complex uh, concepts. Um, another thing is maybe generate real-time feedback and assessment. So, for example, you know, you ask the class for some. Uh, you give the class a, a, a quiz, a, a very short quiz, and then from the feedback, you can uh, ask you, uh, ChatGPT to create additional learning material to uh, to get students in the same level, uh, generate personalized learning uh, lesson plans and course design. For learning, uh, it's really uh, for students, and, and then we do learning as well. Uh, use you know, generate AI to improve uh, creative and critical thinking and reflection skills. So it's very important to remind students, Gen AI is not just an answer machine. You you need to uh, collaborate, work with generate AI. Uh, you need to talk to it. You need to ask it questions. You need to uh, uh, add in your own ideas in order to get really high quality uh, answers. Now, of course, you know Gen AI can help improve the writing and presentation skills. Of students, uh, students can use Gen AI to create quizzes to ask themselves to see uh, as part of revision. Uh, they can uh, ask General AI uh, for some resources for learning uh, in subjects that you know in particular areas that they find challenging. 
uh, if you're doing uh, if you're doing coding, uh, it could help with debugging. Most important, you need to uh, really uh, remind students the importance of transparency and formal uh, acknowledgement. So you know, obviously, uh, this is uh, similar to any uh, academic uh, honesty, and uh, where you need to be transparent on on sources of your material. So you got the source from ChatGPT, uh, you need to acknowledge that. Uh, you can also uh, uh, the students can also indicate where where uh, where they made changes. You know what is the original version and what is the version that they have improved. For research, um, Gen AI can assist with literature review, background research, summaries, doing data anal uh, and, and analysis, uh, assist with paper writing, uh, peer review. I think we mentioned that. For uh, university administration. Uh, ChatGPT and other generative AI can assist with data processing, charting, report writing, a lot of these things that we really don't want to do, <laughs> but we have to. So we can leave it to uh, ChatGPT. For example, accreditation uh, uh, documentation, where there's tons of documentation that you need to fill. So ChatGPT could uh, help uh, collect, uh, consolidate, and then maybe summarize. Okay. So, so, the, so those are a lot of ideas, and there's many, many more. But I just want to highlight four, four key things that applies in general across, you know, whatever role that you are uh, going to use Gen AI for. First, I believe Gen AI should be used inside the class uh, for ex uh, experiential learning, uh, student engagement, and collaboration. It's not something that you just leave it up to the students to do at home. Uh, you need to use in class to show students the proper way to use it, and then have uh, and then you know having a, if it's a flipped classroom, you have teams of students working together, sharing ideas, and then and, and learning from each other is very important. Uh, one of the reasons for doing that is that uh, is is. It's not really that straightforward to use uh, Gen AI. Uh, there's there's all, many different ways to use prompt, and you you heard about prompt engineering. So depending uh, on how smart you are in using Gen AI and prompting, you might get better answers. So uh, having and that's an important lesson to learn. So having uh, Gen AI in class uh, kind of uh, improve their prompting capabilities. And then second is always it's important to remind uh, people that you know general AI is a process. You just don't go and ask a question, get an answer. You have to iteratively talk to the AI to uh, to to refine the answer. And the way you refine answer is that it requires your human creative inquiry, asking uh, questions and then maybe uh, creating new ideas. So the human creativity is is still needed. So if you don't do that, then you get a very, uh, very, uh, 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 very generic kind of answer, uh, which doesn't have any substance, uh, not not any substance, but very, very little, very superficial. Third, I think it's very important to to emphasize that Gen AI is a uh, can be an assistant. So you know, everyone now has a free TA and RA, <laughs> but as a teaching assistant and research assistant. You probably know you have to give them very precise instructions mm. before they understand what you want. Mm. So that's that's very important. So you have to, you know, people say garbage in, garbage out. So pretend uh, Gen AI is a uh, is an intern or teaching assistant or research assistant, and make sure you give very detailed and precise instructions. Uh, Gen AI can also be a tutor, so it doesn't have to be someone that always gives answers. It could be a tutor to tutor students uh, in learning, and and AI is really a co-creator. Uh, it's not going to be able to create things on its own. Uh, it does a much better job when it has your creativity uh, involvement inside. And then of course, you know, need to educate me by everyone on importance of academic integrity, avoiding plagiarism, and how to use inside AI properly. <clears throat> Excuse me. So <clears throat> one one thing that's useful is uh, uh, Socratic questioning, 
and a critical inquiry. Um, this might be something that you already teach students. Ways to uh, ways to talk to uh, uh, ChatGPT. Uh, you could clarify thinking. You know, why did you say that? Can you explain further? You can challenge assumptions. Uh, use evidence in arguments. You can ask ChatGPT what evidence you have, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So all these traditional uh, techniques that dates back to Socrates <laughs> has become useful again uh, with uh, generative AI. Okay. So uh, you hear this a lot, AI will not replace you, but the person using AI will. And that's very important because in the workplace, and it happens so fast, in the workplace, everyone's using AI already. Everyone's using ChatGPT. So it's important, if that's the case, so it's important that you, uh, you know, we need to educate students so that when they go out into the, you know, the work, work area, work environment, they are able to compete with others who are you know, skillful in using AI. And my argument is, you know, um, and, and, and that's one reason why a uh, general AI is so transformational is that higher ed, you know, some people believe the higher ed can no longer concentrate on teaching skills that AI can perform well. You know, if AI can, can write a piece of code very well, or if AI can, help you polish your grammar and spelling well, well, let AI do it. Because, you know, uh, it's hard for us to, uh, it's hard for people to compete with AI in those areas because, it, you know, AI just, you know, uh, does it so easily. Uh, instead, I think what we need to emphasize in our teaching uh, are things that uh, are skills that AI is not good at. For example, AI is not good at creativity. Uh, even when it creates images, it's based on our creative thinking, our prompting. Uh, AI is not good at critical and analytical thinking. So those are skills that we, we need to uh, help our students sharpen uh, their critical and analytical thinking skills. AI cannot do, uh, is not good at judgment. Um, it's not good at setting priorities because AI, <laughs> AI doesn't have any priorities. It's not good at interpersonal communication. And that's very, very important when you go into a work environment. Interpersonal communication is uh, so important. Uh, empathetic abilities, uh, that's also very important. Having curiosity and then forming some sort of opinion. Uh, AI has no opinion whatsoever. It only repeats basically what it read <laughs> online and then Wikipedia and so forth. So I think, you know, uh, AI, uh, gender AI is transforming the way we teach because we're focusing on different things now. We're focusing on things and skills that only humans can do, whereas uh, we use the skills uh, with AI as our assistant. Uh, AI can create that, you know, that out, uh, outline for a uh, research project. AI can create uh, a summary for a paper, but we get to design, you know, we direction we should go uh, in, uh, in terms of uh, what we do for our research or create new ideas that you know no one has thought about before so i want to strengthen this uh this uh idea with the story of three bricklayers uh, sir christopher wren is uh, the architect behind st paul cathedral in london uh, some of you heard this story before no it's a very old story <laughs> <laughs> so the story, I don't know if it's true, but Sir Christopher Wren, uh, while St. Paul Cathedral was being built, uh, he went to the construction site. So he saw three brick layers, and he, you know, he was furious and asked one, the first brick layer, what are you doing? So the brick layer, one, the first brick layer said, oh, I'm just making bricks. And they asked the second brick layer, what are you doing? Oh, I'm just using the bricks this guy made and put it and making a wall. And then he asked the third brick layer, he says, I am creating the most magnificent cathedral for the Almighty. So, so what I'm trying to get to is that let AI do the bricks, let AI build the wall. Let's help our students be the third brick layer who has this vision of a, 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 a grander, uh, grander idea, uh, have a vision of the bigger picture of what we're trying to do. And, uh, and, 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 and I think that's the way uh, uh, education is being transformed is helping students 
uh, sharpen their human human skills and let AI do the the I guess the heavy lifting in some of the some of these professions. Okay, but um, I think it's also important to remind uh, people that AI or gender of AI is not all perfect. Uh, there's actually a lot of problems with generated AI. First of all, it's privacy and security. So if you have uh, you have enterprise license, then that's okay. But students may be using other gender of AI. They might not be using open AI or ChatGPT. So you need to remind them that some of these general AI uh, may store and use information uh, that you uh, you you profit. Uh, so um, so definitely do not put in your personal information. Uh, do not put in your bank account information, your ID number, and so forth, uh, because it might be used for training. And then the second problem is ethics and accountability. Because AI learn, uh, you know, like ChatGPT learn from what it read in so many different websites. And some of these websites uh, may have inaccurate information. They might be biased. Uh, as a consequence, generate AI when it answers uh, your prompt, it may integrate those inaccuracies uh, and biases uh, into the, the 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 result. And some of this, uh, some of the results that uh, generate AI. Uh, provides might not be uh, even ethical. And what companies are doing is they're trying to, uh, they're trying their best to filter out these biases and uh, harmful uh, outputs from gender AI, um, but uh, it's, it's not totally perfect. And then quality and reliability. Uh, it all, it, uh, every time it generates an answer, it might not be the same. And sometimes the quality may vary, uh, particular, so it, it might not be accurate. And it may hallucinate. So hallucinate, and I'm sure all you know, hallucinate means it makes up things. And I think of that like is like a general AI is like a a kid or maybe like a student. If you ask a student a question that he or she don't know, they'll try to make up an answer. <laughs> and that's what general AI does. If you ask general AI to come up with uh, five references for a particular subject, and if it does couldn't find it, it'll just randomly create some 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 references for you. Last but not least uh, is copyright and other legal risks, because AI learn from reading material. Some of the material are copyrighted, like books, and that's causing a problem because people don't like uh, their copyrighted material being used to train AI that's making money without their consent. And a lot of writers and uh, artists whose images are being uh, learned from are suing uh, these gender AI companies. But as a liberal arts university, you guys are have a big advantage because <laughs> you basically teach uh, the human side of education. Uh, so, you know, uh, in general, liberal arts university has a more interdisciplinary approach to learning. You learn a broad range of different subjects. Um, you teach critical and innovative thinking skills. And that's important in in, uh, in a liberal arts education. Uh, liberal arts, by definition, you need to be creative, come up with new ideas, uh, uh, learn to think differently. And a lot of people who have a liberal arts degree gets to work in different industries because they're, they're the skills that they have acquired can be adapted to uh, to different industries. Uh, so we can easily switch uh, those skills uh, and apply to different industries. You learn empathy from a love, from exposure to uh, you know, philosophy, history, et cetera. And through that experience, you understand the human experience much, much better than maybe a uh, computer scientist. <laughs> However, it, uh, nevertheless, it doesn't mean that general AI is not going to impact uh, your students because uh, there are uh, there are a few things. Uh, first of all, uh, you might have known there's this ongoing strike um, by the Actors Guild, uh, Writers Guild of America, and and also the Actors Guild. So there are uh, they're striking for many things. Uh, pay is one of them. Uh, royalty is another. But they're also striking because um, uh, these uh, uh, production uh, companies um, uh, are and studios are arguing that they can use general AI to write scripts, write uh, 
write TV series. Uh, they might want to supplement humans with AI. So the, the Writers Guild uh, Association is uh, firmly against that. Um, there's also uh, 10,000 authors, probably more now, that signed a letter uh, uh, that was sent to CEOs of these AI companies uh, asking them to protect the rights of writers. What that means is that uh, these general AI learn from reading books that these writers have written without their consent. So they're asking, you know, if you want to use my, my book to learn and make your AI smarter, you have to have my, my agreement. Second, you need to compensate me for making your AI smart. <laughs> And then third, whatever that, that you generate from my material, you have to give me royalty. So this is you know, something that's ongoing. Uh, I think you know, generative AI is going to impact um, everyone in different industries. Okay, I want to end by sharing uh, this Open AI Guide to Teaching, which was released just last week. I'm not sure everyone knows about this, but Open AI has a, um, has a mini uh, site that uh, has material specific for teaching. So it's called Teaching with AI, so you can Google that. And it's basically a small guide to help you uh, create prompts. So here is a, an example prompt. And these prompts are pretty big. So don't be scared because normal prompts don't have to be that big, but you know, uh, but this kind of illustrates how, how you can create something more sophisticated than the normal question and answer. So this whole paragraph is basically a prompt that is asking ChatGPT to help a teacher uh, plan a lesson. And it goes step by step, you know, what, what uh, ChatGPT uh, should do. So ChatGPT could help you uh, create lesson plans. It could have, uh, it could uh, create effective explanation examples and analogies. So here you could, um, so if you want to create a uh, instructional, so it's like an instructional designer, uh, you can ask the teacher, you know, what kind of level you want your teacher, uh, your what kind of level your students are, what kind of topic you want to teach, uh, are there particular concepts that you want them to learn, and uh, what what do you know about your students that may kind um, uh, customize the the lecture. So what I did is I I uh, copy and paste this entire paragraph into. Uh, Bing chat. So here, I copy and paste in the Bing chat, and then when you run this prompt, it says, "You know, hi, hi, this is you know, this is Bing um, uh, chat mode. Let's start with question. Tell me the level, uh, learning level of your students." Uh, and then I say, "Okay, my students are at college level." Okay, and then it says, "Okay, thank you." Uh, next question is, "What topic uh, concept you want me uh, to explain?" So I says, "I want to explain the process of design thinking." And then, uh, and then it has a third uh, question is, are there particular concepts that you want to include? So I want to say, uh, I want to teach design thinking as part of a course on innovation and creativity. My students have some experience with brainstorming, prototyping, but they're not familiar with the whole design thinking process. And then final question is, you know, uh, what do you think about your students that may uh, help customize? So I said, students are from uh, different disciplines and majors. You know, however, I, I would like to have some elements of technology in the process, even though they might not be technical, uh, they might not have technical knowledge. And then based on that information, that, uh, that dialogue and interaction, uh, it came up with uh, this, uh, this design to help explain uh, design thinking. And these are the steps, uh, come up with examples, and so forth. So a teacher who's teaching design thinking can have this, you know, customized uh, learning material uh, for his or her class. <laughs> and here's another example prompt from OpenAI. So as you know, uh, it's always easier to learn when uh, when you teach. So here is a prompt that is asking students to teach Chat GPT a particular subject. Again, you can just kind of paste this into uh, your chat GPT, and then we we'll start asking uh, the student questions. Uh, you can uh, also create an AI tutor, uh, specifying what you will learn about, and then uh, prompt uh, uh, give students uh, explanations, examples, and so forth. 
It also has a educator FAQ in this website, which is very useful. Um, it has common problems. So for example, you know, how can educator respond to student presenting AI generated content as their own? You know, how do you handle that if a student plagiarized ChatGPT? So there's some examples. Explain you know, why is ChatGPT bias? Uh, can you use ChatGPT for assessment and feedback? So obviously it's no, <laughs> but you can use it as a reference. Uh, human in the loop is very important uh, because this is uh, uh, assessment is something that's very important uh, as an impact on students. Uh, is ChatGPT safe for all ages? Uh, no, it's only I think 13 or above. Uh, does ChatGPT tell the truth, uh, et cetera, et cetera? So there's a lot of FAQ that you can use this to kind of guide you uh, in when you're adopting ChatGPT in teaching. And I want to end with uh, with this quote: uh, is, "Is is not really Einstein? <laughs> it's ChatGPT for Einstein." So what I did is I asked ChatGPT more to pretend, uh, you know, it's Einstein. And what it did is, of course, it, it, it kind of looked at all the quotes that Einstein has, has said before. And it kind of, uh, I don't know uh, Einstein's view on education. And it came up with this quote, which I think is, is pretty, uh, it's very, very, very powerful and accurate. So it says, gender for AI is a powerful tool for human creativity and discovery. But it is not a substitute for human intelligence and wisdom. It is a partner, not a master. Higher education must teach them how to use it wisely and responsibly, and how to keep their own minds open and curious. Pretty amazing, huh? And if you're uh, interested, I actually wrote an article in South China Post uh, about using uh, using ChatGPT for higher ed. So if you're interested, you can Google for that and read my article in South China Foreign Post. And that's all I have. Um, I'm happy to answer any questions that you might have. So, uh, thank you for the very inspiring sharing, Professor Chen. Uh, so, uh, you have shared a lot of uh, insightful ideas and information how AI can transform higher education. Indeed, I have already seen a question from Professor Kevinson in the chat box. So, uh, he, she asked, is it possible to distinguish material produced by generative AI and real people? Answer is uh, is no. At the early days, maybe. <laughs> uh, or no, it's quite impossible. Because and, and I tell you what, because we 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 we've uh, shouted until our faces are blue about academic integrity, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. this is one of the biggest gaps that is going mm -hmm. to appear. You know, when when we challenge students about academic. Integrity. We, we can tell them how important it is, la 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 da, you know, it's not moral, la 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 da. But I'm sure what they are thinking of is how can I use ChatGPT to do a piece of work as quickly and as painlessly as possible <laughs> and, and get away with it, right? Yeah, no, I agree. I agree. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, so that is uh, that's an important challenge. It challenges mm -hmm. the way we ask uh, students right. uh, uh, how we do the assignment. Mm. And if we, you know, if we design the assignment right, um, it doesn't matter if they use ChatGPT uh, uh, or, or or not, because you know students uh, who don't have that, you know, that that, that creative uh, thinking and uh, creative inquiry uh, capability uh, is not going to be able to generate good, good answers. So even you know, a hundred students, or hundred ten students, they all use ChatGPT. The result will be different. Students who are better at critical thinking, analytical thinking, creative uh, thinking, etc., it's going to generate better better answers. Uh, even you know, from with uh, with ChatGPT, students who just type in the question and get an answer is not going to do well. well That's yes. what, what I think. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I want to ask a follow-up question on that. So I, I heard, uh, yeah, actually, we know that there are some detection tools uh, in the market. And I also learned that the, actually the accuracy rate of those detection tools is actually quite bad. So do you think that in the future, there's any slim possibility that the detection tool will be accurate enough for us to differentiate like uh, AI-generated content and uh, real people's uh, content? 
No, that like I said, it's going to be impossible. impossible. Uh, but I think the key thing is, is is probably not to focus so much on on that avoiding plagiarism, but mm. helping students understand what is the best way to use AI. Mm. And the best way is you know AI is just a a, a collaborator. Mm-hmm. It's, it's it's more like an assistant. Uh, you have to provide a lot of your own creativity in order to create good answers. So I think you know helping students make best use of AI is important rather than you know, spotting because you just use AI and 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 then just you know cut and paste the answer uh, is is going to be uh, is not going to be a high quality answer. And then uh, and then uh, students who are really smart, what they do is now they're not going to cut and paste the answer. They're going to improve it. They'll add their own opinion. And like I said, when when ChatGPT come up with a uh, answer or reply, it's very generic. It's mm-hmm. very you know uh, it's very superficial. Uh, 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 there's no opinion or, or, or um, uh, so you know y- y- you can tell from that mm-hmm. uh, if if it's uh, AI generated. But technically, there's no way to do it. I mean, there's so many tools to help students yeah. make output not 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 like ChatGPT for output. So there's there's tools to full you know whatever plagiarism tool you're using, mm. uh, turn it in or or whatever. Uh, so there's tools that students use to uh, to mix the content, rephrase the content, etc. So yeah, I don't wouldn't bother try to uh, mm-hmm. try to do that. But turn it in still has a good uh, has a good purpose if they take uh, content from papers with the, you know the traditional use of turn it in if, if they kind of paste from papers. Uh, it'll write uh, verbatim, then they could recognize that. Uh, but uh, again, you know, if students run it through a paraphrase uh, filter, <laughs> you're not going to be able to know. So uh, this uh, actually this is uh, somehow related to my another question. So uh, as you mentioned, uh, AI is not good at creativity, so it becomes the strength of human being, and it is somehow important to train our teachers and students to create together with AI. So uh, do you have any ideas or directions how to like cultivate creativity with the support of AI tools? So uh, for example, if we want to refine our assessment strategies or tasks to serve this goal, uh, any ideas or examples you'll come across that can share with us? Yeah, I think that the most common one is in the assessments explicitly say you have to use ChatGPT. And then, and then the student have to show their their work. So they, you know, this is the original version. What is the the critical thinking process that you went through to improve it from original version to final version? Where did you make the changes? Why you make those changes? Mm-hmm. Uh, so, th- so be able to understand the student's thought process helps you understand: is the student really knowing the material? Is it doing some critical thinking? Uh, and then there's a, in ChatGPT, there's ways where you can share the whole conversation. So you can ask students, remember to share the conversation with, with me, you know, the teacher. And the teacher would have all the scripts of all the students that they could look at. What are the, what, what are the stuff they went through? If a student just, you know, cut and paste the first answer, then obviously it's not, they're not. But if a, if another student uh, went through a very elaborate, uh, steps, you know, uh, uh, improving it, and, 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 and by doing so, it, you see uh, whether I sort of understand what's missing from the from the piece that the ChatGPT uh, generated, uh, uh, and and is asking it to improve it. So so be able for a student to analyze the output of ChatGPT, and be able to ask ChatGPT to improve it because it's not doing well. You know, is is uh, is one approach. Mm-hmm. So we're not only assessing the final outcome, but also the value the student yeah, has. Like the steps in a math problem. Yeah. Let's see. So uh, may I know if there are any other questions from the audience? Uh, I think it makes sense to take a more preemptive uh, approach. Just you know, upfront ask the students say, okay, use ChatGPT, right? Generate whatever you want to generate, and then show me uh, how you are improving on the AI generated material. I, I think I think it's brilliant. Um, 
instead of you know spending time trying to say, oh, did you copy this? <laughs> you know, did you plagiarize that? Because I, I think we we are quite it is it is out of control. You know, uh, currently we, we we don't have the tools um, to detect plagiarism anymore as as we used to, right? Um, so. I think uh, I like you know uh, what you've suggested, and it's definitely something we we can all learn to use. And then the fact of life is that once you go out to work, everyone's using ChatGPT. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah. The, the boss doesn't matter, doesn't care if you got it from ChatGPT or, right. or yourself, that, as so long you, as you, yeah, you better, better train them well. Yeah. You know how to use ChatGPT to come up with the best possible solutions or, or whatever. I, yeah. I think it's a very brilliant approach. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, any other questions? If no, then do you mind if I ask one last question? Okay. Uh, I'm very interested in the copyright issue you mentioned. So as you said, AI may incorporate copyright materials and it results in a lot of controversies. So uh, like, like uh, in, in your anticipation, uh, do you foresee any strategies to tackle this issue or the idea of copyright may be changed due to the popularity of AI? So what, what do you think about this? Yeah, I, I think the problem is that uh, we don't know what's going to happen. Mm. Uh, it's still in courts. Uh, there's no clear decision uh, as to what happened, what's going to happen. So, so uh, potentially, uh, people who use ChatGPT to create things might get into trouble. So, you know, we don't know. But what companies are doing uh, in the industry is that they're creating their own internal ChatGPT. So they're not using ChatGPT, but they use a, an internal uh, LLM that only has knowledge that they they can control. So, for example, it's like a a, a knowledge uh, uh, knowledge portal, but instead of a um, knowledge sharing portal, uh, uh, ChatGP, uh, this LLM reads all the content. Mm -hmm. um, for university, you have a lot of documents and, and so forth. So you might have a uh, LLM that knows everything about your university, um, all the policies and, and whatnot. And that could be uh, could be much smaller because a lot of companies, they don't need um, a AI that knows everything in the world. <laughs> They only need an AI that knows about you know uh, their 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 company, their products and services and so forth. They don't they don't need AI to write a poem, or write a story, or murder mystery. Uh, so so companies are trying to avoid the copyright issue by creating their own uh, ChatGPT uh, with um, data sources that they control uh, that's not copyrighted. I mean, even in China, China uh, has this general AI uh, regulation that they they finalized I think a couple of months ago is specifically say that all uh, general AI uh, models in China cannot use copyrighted material mm. I see so it seems to be like maybe a future trend that every organization will have their own organization specific chat GPT or like yeah it's and it's getting easier because there's so many uh, open source models. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's a lot easier. I mean, I think all, all computer science students uh, uh, will probably create their own LLM before they graduate. Uh, so it is very, uh, very easy to do because it's uh, open source. I see. So uh, thank you for your brilliant uh, like, like, uh, presentation and all the information you share with us. So uh, colleagues, uh, if you don't have further questions, um, then this is the end of this ATLC workshop. So thank you, Professor Chen, again for the inspiring sharing. So if you don't mind, uh, uh, I will share your PowerPoint and materials with uh, our audience. No, no problem. It's my pleasure to be here. Thank you for thank inviting you me. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Chen. Thank you. Bye-bye.